Hey everyone, Olaf here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this cool ball animation in Blender. It's going to be a beginner tutorial, so you will be able to follow even though you're new to Blender. So let's get started. Now you want to start off by switching from Blender Render to Cycles Render for better shading. And then you want to click X to delete the default cube. And then select right click on the lamp and click X to delete again. Okay, so go up to create and then add a plane and click S to scale. This is going to be the floor of the animation. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to add is another plane and this plane is going to be the emitter for all the balls. So just add a plane and then click G to grab. And then you want to add another object. You want to add a UV sphere which is going to be the balls of this animation. Click G set to grab it on the set axis, click G to grab it again. And now we're going to add a modifier. We're going to add an, a subdivision modifier and we're going to make the render to 1. And then click smooth on shading. And now we're going to move it to uh, another layer just to uh, get it away from the animation. So click M and then click on another layer. We're going to select the plane again and add particles. And now I can just copy all the numbers I put in. So emission 5000. And is obviously 250 because that's the length of the animation. Same with lifetime. And you want to go down to emitter offset or emitter object. Which is going to be how far the balls go away from the plane itself in the animation. And click object duplicate object and select the sphere and increase the size so that it's visible and make some of the sizes random. If you have done everything correctly now you should have an animation that looks like this. It doesn't have to look exactly like this but it should look something like this. And I'm just gonna rotate this to make it go sideways and you can always change this as you want. You can make it smaller, you can make it larger and you can rotate it however you want. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller to make the gap between them a little bit shorter as well. And now we can go back to frame 1 and I'm going to try different sizes and see how it looks. As you can see size 0.95 is too big even if I make the plane larger so I think we just have to look through the different sizes for the balls and the different sizes for the plane and just find out what looks the best. I think it right now looks good so I might just adjust it a little bit more, move it higher up and maybe adjust the size of the balls to be a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna make it maybe a point to 9 for example and I think this looks good so now we can start adding the lighting and also editing this plane to make it a little bit thicker like this E to extrude and it's time to start adding the lighting so we're gonna go to create add a plane then you want to click G to grab and R to rotate S to scale and then click R then set to rotate, rotate the plane on the set axis. We're going to add a material and we're going to use an emission shader and increase the strength to about 8. And if you go to render mode now, you can see how it looks. So now we have the first light. Click number 0 to go to the camera. And let's just add more lights. So you're going to click S to scale again, left click to confirm, and we're going to click Shift D to duplicate. So you're going to have three lights, an R set to rotate it on the Z axis again, S to scale it down, Shift D to duplicate again, an R set to rotate it on the Z axis, to turn it around and make it even smaller than the second one. Okay, so now we have the basic three-point lighting setup. So we can grab them as we want to. If you hold in shift while you select all of them, 
you can grab the mold. So I'm going to click G then set to grab them on the Z axis. We're going to click S to make them all larger and then left click to confirm. And if you go down to play now, we can kind of see how it looks. I think the lighting looks okay for now. So we're going to go into the camera, click numpad zero to go to the camera, right click to select the camera. Uh, one more time and then click uh, shift F to go to the fly cam mode. That way you can move around with W, A, S and D to find the position of the camera that you want to have. And you can just walk around and try to find the position you want to have. So I think this looks good. So left click to confirm. I'm going to select the plane as well and go into edit mode and then click E to extrude it up. We're going to extrude it far up. So G set to grab it even further. And then click X and delete the face. So now we have kind of a box for the animation to take place so that the uh, spheres don't fall out of the scene. And we're going to go back to, oh sorry, rendered mode. And let's start off by adding a color to the floor and walls. And we're going to make it a little bit dark. At least I want to try to make it dark in the beginning and we can see what color we want to have later. And go to world settings and make it lighter. Or you can make it darker, it's up to you. These are just the colors so you can make everything the color you want to have. Maybe we can have a little dark and let's select the uh, emitter. So right click on the emitter and then add a material. So new material and I'm going to make it let's say blue. And before I start adding colors for the balls, I think I just want to fix the collision and the physics of the scene so that the balls bounce when they hit the, um, the floor. So just add a collision. And then you want to add a collision to the uh, balls. So just select the emitter. And I'm going to test the animation now. And basically what happens when you use the default settings for the emitter and uh, collision is that they just keep bouncing with the same height so they don't really lose any height when they bounce and that looks really natural so you're just going to increase the stickiness until you have the bounciness you want to have. And I'm going to click G then set in edit mode for the sphere so that when the uh, balls hit the floor, they're going to uh, bounce on the bottom of the balls and not in the middle. So that it actually doesn't fall through the uh, floor. And as you can see right now, the stickiness is a little bit too high. So I'm going to make them, I'm just going to test different stickiness settings until we have the bouncing effect that we want to have. I still think it's too bounce. Uh, too sticky. So we're just gonna decrease the stickiness in both uh, particle settings and see how it looks. Okay, let's try again. Click play. And they still don't have enough stickiness. So I'm just gonna decrease it even more. Let's put it to zero. And again, that's maybe a little bit too low. Okay, so just let's um, change the stickiness setting one more time before we start. Uh, making the final render. So I'm just going to make the stickiness value to about let's say 3 and go back to frame 0 and click play and see how it looks. Okay so I like the stickiness a lot more now. I think it looks more realistic. You can always make it less sticky if you want to have more bounce in the effects. So uh, let's try 2.5 this time. And yeah, I think that's enough. That actually looks enough. It has some bounce, but it still looks realistic. And let's select the camera again. Click Shift F to move around. I'm just going to do a final adjustment in the camera. And we still haven't added a color for the balls. So I'm just going to go down and select the sphere. 
go into rendered mode and then go to the materials we're gonna change the color and of course you can change it to whatever you want but I'm just gonna make them blue so go to uh, you can try different materials maybe you can try glossy if you want to and just try different types of materials I like when they are a little bit glossy and maybe have some blueness so that they have a cool effect obviously you need some roughness so that they're not too like shiny but I think this looks, looks good and and the final minutes of this tutorial would just be a little bit of adjusting and try to make it look better and I'm gonna select the camera again go a little bit forward and try to find the ideal spot for the camera to make the final video look cool because it's a lot about perspective okay let's click play see how it looks find a nice frame to have uh, the render obviously you can animate the whole thing by just clicking animate in the camera instead of render but for this tutorial I'm just gonna render one image because it's gonna take too long to render the whole animation okay so let's try to make the floor glossy and see how it looks increase the roughness to make it look different than a mirror and obviously if you want to save time on the rendering you can just go back to diffuse and I think maybe I should go back to the light color because it's gonna make it it's gonna make the balls stick out more from the background which I like so I think this is good for now so we're gonna go up to the camera and start preparing the render increase the quality to 100% go to sampling and increase the samples to whatever you want to have I'm just gonna write in 200 and obviously if you want to make an animation you should make a folder for the PNG images and I'm gonna save it in my blender files folder which is on the top and TMP and I'm gonna make a new folder for the animation images because I'm gonna animate this after this tutorial and what you do is that you just click animate and all the images will pop up in this folder and you can make them into an mp4 file later and then you just click animation but this is in this tutorial I'm just gonna render one image and it starts rendering and I'm gonna speed up the render and this is what it looks like when it's finished and I'm very happy with these results so I'm going to save the image as a PNG file so save as image and find a place where we want to save the final image and give it a name and that's it for this tutorial if you have any questions for this tutorial just leave them in the comments and thank you so much for watching